What's up everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. Well, look what the cat dragged in behind me here. Well, I believe this is a Ford 9N tractor and uh, I've owned a ton of tractors over the years, but believe it or not, this will be my first Ford N series. <clears throat> and that being said, I really don't know all that much about these tractors, so I'm kind of learning as I go here. I didn't even know for sure what model this was until I drug it into the driveway here and got on the old Google machine. And from what I understand, the difference between the 8N and the 9N, well, there's many differences, but the easiest way to tell is the foot pedal and foot peg assembly here. So 8Ns, the way I understand it, have floorboards. 9Ns have foot pegs like this one does. The 9N has a brake on each side. This is the right side brake and that outside pedal would be the left side brake that pedal on the inside there is your clutch so therefore just those differences right there tell me that this is indeed a 9n so these are early early tractors i think they started building the 9ns in the 30s i want to say but uh i just picked this thing up for 400 dollars, which is slightly more than scrap value basically just to save it from the scrapper. My neighbor is a scrap collector and whenever he gets something cool like this, he usually gives me first shot at it because he knows I have a soft spot for iron and can't bear to see anything go to scrap unjustly. So he told me the guy he got it from said the engine was locked up. I have not confirmed that. He did not confirm that. So I guess the first thing we're gonna do is pop the plugs out, fill the cylinders full of penetrating oil and uh, go from there. This is a four-cylinder inline gas engine, a Marvel Shebler updraft carburetor on it. I'm slightly familiar with these carburetors. These are similar to all the ones that were on my Wisconsin engines I've played with over the years. Um, originally a six-volt system. I don't know if they've converted it here or what they've done. Probably since it has an alternator, I'm going to guess that it, they've changed it to a 12-volt system. Although there's not much system here. There's literally like two or three wires in the whole machine. So the good on this tractor would be the sheet metal, I guess. The sheet metal all appears to be in pretty darn good shape aside from this ding and these two little dings here. The sheet metal is all straight, not rotted away. Same with these fenders. These fenders seem to be pretty solid. I don't see any real significant rot to them at all. Right down here, they're a little rusted, but not too bad at all. Both of the left side tires appear to be in usable condition and hold air rather well. They have plenty of tread left on them. A little bit of dry rot, but on a tractor like this, that could last a lifetime. The bad is the passenger side here, the right side rather. There's no passenger seat, I guess. That tire's not gonna hold air anymore. So that one's junk. And then this tire here, you know, would probably work but the rim has seen better days so i don't know unless i can find a rim cheap i don't think we're going to be fixing that my plan is just to uh hopefully get this thing running and then get it off my lot here i can sell this thing off make a couple bucks on it and save it from the scrapper pretty much my life goal these days is just to save cooled stuff like that from going to a scrap heap Did I guess the right size? No, those are three quarters. So right away, looking close here, one of the first things I noticed that make this thing obviously pretty old to me um, is the way they have the plug wires routed here. They have all the plug wires coming up off of, I guess this is probably a magneto. All the plug wires run through this tube right here and then come out at each plug and that is a design that I've seen on many, many old, early hot rods, that kind of thing. All the early 20s, 30s cars, even earlier than that. I think somewhere in the 40s is where they got away from doing that in vehicles. But uh, I'm sure you guys on the internet know better than I do. But it's not something you see on later model stuff. So definitely an earlier machine here. Now, well, one thing... I should do before I pull these plugs out. You see how these depressions around the plugs, they can hold a lot of dirt. 
So I'm gonna take the compressor and blow out all those little depressions around the plugs before I pull them out. That way any dirt in there doesn't fall down into the cylinders. All right, there we go. Plug number one out, and I tell you what, that thing actually looks pretty darn good there. They look like brand new plugs, actually. They got a little bit of run time on them, but not much. I don't know how long this thing has been sitting for sure. The guy I got it from said the guy that he got it from had it running a few years ago, and then it just sat, and now the engine's stuck. So, could be nothing. Could be really easy to get going, or it could be completely, completely foobar. So we'll see. These birds are just squawking today. Plug number two looks excellent as well. That oil on there is oil I sprayed in there. Again, plug three, excellent as well. I think he replaced all four spark plugs here before this machine sat yep just as i suspected the last plug looks great as well we'll just fill these cylinders with a whole bunch of penetrating oil now and let them soak all right well that ought to be enough oil we'll let that sit and investigate other things in the meantime all right well we have oil on the dipstick. It doesn't look super dirty. It doesn't smell too bad either. It doesn't smell like it's polluted with gas or anything, which would be nigh and almost impossible on a machine like this since it has an updraft carburetor instead of a downdraft. But you never want to rule anything out. Tell you what, the steering is impressively tight on this old girl. Not much play at all. That's tighter than my 454, which is much, much newer. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, lovely. So we have an air intake here, an air oil bath air filter, actually. The hose is cut off of that. We have a lovely mouse nest here and what should be the battery box. Looking at the back side of the dash here, we've got an ignition switch, oil pressure switch by the looks of it, uh, push button starter, and an amp gauge. We also have a three-speed transmission, so reverse, second, third, first. I'll tell you what, the thing shifts really nice, actually. I feel good about that. This is the clutch. We got some free play in there, but, uh, oh, okay. Feels like the clutch depresses just fine. That's a good sign. Still has some fuel in there, although the tank doesn't look too nasty. Tank actually looks pretty darn clean. Oh, that fuel doesn't even smell too old. It's not super varnished yet. I mean, it's definitely past its prime, but it's not molasses yet. Eh, yeah, well, that ain't good. I think I see spider webs down inside of the radiator here. Looks pretty dry, so that's not a great sign. Well, that penetrating oil's only been sitting in the cylinders a few minutes. We'll see if we can get this engine to spin over just using the alternator here, which is not ideal. The belt could slip, which it immediately did. So that's not gonna do us any good. And I'd say we could tighten up the belt and try again, but it appears that the alternator is at the end of its adjustment, so it's not gonna get any tighter for us. I just noticed this, maybe somebody can clue me in. It looks like they cut off the original wheels with a torch and somehow bolted these ones up to them. It's the same on both front wheels. I've never seen anything like that. Let me know what's going on there. So another thing we can do to try to break the engine loose or see if it turns, obviously we could hook the battery up and just bump the starter and see if it tries to spin it, but uh, it's not ideal. We can put it in the highest gear and rock the wheels back and forth, which will, of course, transfer up to the engine and sometimes break them free. 
I have broken my old farm all free that way once or twice. So, I guess we'll try it. It's going to be really hard since we have flat tires, but yeah, we'll try. This is really the best view I can give you. If you see this pulley turn, then that means the engine's turning. Ready? Really good news there. The first few rocks back and forth, the uh, engine did not want to spin, but after a few, that engine did indeed break loose uh, and seems to be spinning okay now. So what we can do is go ahead and grab a battery and hook it up here and crank it over with the starter. We need to crank it over with the starter first to blow out all the excess penetrating oil we put in the cylinders and get this thing going. Mm-mm-mm, mouse house. I don't know the odds of me having the proper battery just sitting on the shelf here, but I did. Well, I reckon the next issue be either spark or fuel. And the fuel, like I said, doesn't look awful, but this is our fuel sediment bowl. We can take this off and see what kind of crap lies in that bowl. Come on. Yeah, in all reality, the gas does not look that bad in there. Yeah, in all reality, the fuel that just came out of here doesn't look that bad. There's definitely some crap at the bottom of the bowl, but not, not the worst I've seen by a mile. It also definitely has a varnish smell to it, so it's been in there for a while, but I've seen much, much worse. There is hope here. I don't even know that I'm going to drain the tank because it looks so clean. I think I might just add some fuel to it and dilute it, kind of mix it up a bit and hope for the best. Up a bit and hope for the best. One thing we really have going in our favor here is that the fuel was shut off to that carburetor. So there is a chance that the fuel is not all gummed up in the carburetor. I opened that valve, there should be fuel pouring out of here right now, but of course there's not. So we'll have to find a wire or something, probe it up through here, see why we're not getting fuel. You think we can just get lucky and blow some air up through there? Would appear not. Pull this whole thing off of here and clean it out because I can't fish a wire up through it. We're gonna try to do this without making a giant mess. I know gas is gonna go everywhere. That's the way she goes. Ready? Yep. Yep. Not too bad. Let's get this thing cleaned out. So here's the underside of this fuel filter housing. Look at all that gray sludge that's in here. I don't know what the heck that is. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that. But we'll hit that with some brake clean and a wire brush and get that cleaned up. All right, that's cleaned out pretty good. But do you guys see right here at the fuel outlet? That's the port that goes down to the carburetor. Not this guy. This one over here that goes out. This brass piece. And if you look really close there, you can see there's stringy bits of... If you look really close there, you can see there's stringy bits of this stuff, which is Teflon tape. 
I see people use this stuff in fuel systems all the time like this, and you're not supposed to. It's not rated for fuel use. You have to have the special stuff that is actually good for fuel use if you want to do that. And that right there is the reason you don't use it. It's because it gets into your fuel system and actually clogs things up. So I'm going to blow those out of there, and then we'll use the proper stuff when we reassemble this thing. So there's a couple different products you can use to seal up threads like that. If you want to use tape, there's this stuff, and I'm sure there's other brands of it too. But this blue stuff is actually rated for fuel use. Um, so you got to pay attention before you use it. And then the other stuff is like a pipe dope. So this stuff here is a uh, thread and gasket maker that is rated for fuel use as well. And it'll work just fine. Typically, I like to go with this stuff over the tape because you don't get those stringy issues. I'm going to try to do this quickly, but uh, yeah. Ready? I have a tray, but still. That wasn't too bad. Come on, start the threads. There we go. There we go. Yeah, not too bad. not a ton of fuel coming out of there but I think that might be something to do with our fuel level and not so much the valve well two more things before we can try to fire this thing up a is if the fuel sediment bowl was gummed up as bad as it was pretty darn good chance the carburetor is too so it's easy enough to pop off of here go ahead and pop it off check it inside see what it looks like and uh, more than likely it's going to require a good scrubbing before it would be worth a darn at making this thing run. The second thing is we're going to have to check for spark and see about this magneto here. I'm unfamiliar with these electrical systems so we'll have to do a little bit of studying first. One great thing about these tractors is that there was so many of them made that they're still pretty common even today. I believe I believe most farm stores actually carry carburetor kits that will uh, work to rebuild this thing. Like I said, uh, this is a Marvel Shebler updraft cast iron carburetor. <clears throat> the trick is just going to be trying to get this thing off of here without ruining the gaskets. Let me get. Looking good. Quick release throttle linkages. Man, this thing's nice to work on. That couldn't be easier to remove, really. Clearly, the intake hose has been off for quite a while because I see it's full of spider webs and other miscellaneous garbage. Pretty simple carburetor. Got a high and a low speed needle here. And uh, that's about it. See what's behind door number one here. Ah, of course the first thing I do is jam the screwdriver in there. Probably just broke something. I think the main needle has to come out of this to separate the halves. Hopefully I didn't just bend that thing. I'm amazed. This carburetor looks spotless aside from a little bit of rust and some stuff in the intake here. Floats not gummed up at all. Well, no. A little stiff if anything. I cannot believe this.
just turn this fuel needle in all the way and then back it out two full turns. That's usually where I base start everything. If I had a manual, it usually gives you the base settings, but two usually gets you close enough where you can get it running and adjust it. It'll be real easy when you run these needles in because you can easily damage them. All right, I know we still have to hook up the fuel line, but I'm gonna wait to do that until we can flow test it and make sure we're getting enough flow out of the line. I gotta throw some fresh gas in for that. Well, this thing better run, because if not, there goes five gallons of expensive liquid. Last but certainly not least, if we want this thing to party, then we need to have spark. So right here, I believe this should be the magneto cover. I'll try to get it off without damaging the gasket. That's what appear I have. Oh look, can you guys see? There's a whole colony of ants coming out of there. That's lovely. Look at that. Add that one to the list of things I've never seen before. But I can say I've seen it now. <laughs> oh yeah, there's the queen. Would you just look at that? Never thought I'd see anything like that. I wonder how the heck they're getting in there. It's sealed up pretty good. I don't think it's quite like a magneto because they have battery voltage running to the top of it here, if you can tell. Um, at least that's the way it's wired. So I don't know anything about these. I'm gonna just assume that they have it right and go ahead and try this thing. I did throw the spark plugs back in. I'm gonna throw a uh, spark checker on it real quick and try to crank it over and see if we see anything. good I don't see anything Ooh. that was interesting <laughs> I know exactly what caused that I don't know if you guys saw that little fireball wolf up there but uh, I had used a little bit of carb cleaner to evict the ants down there inside of this ignition system and apparently there was some residual in there and when I just let the air to it it made a nice little woof <laughs> the last thing you expect when you're taking something like this apart it's really hard to show you guys what's going on in there I'm gonna do my best but no promises so basically what we're looking for inside of this system is corrosion anything that would keep the voltage from getting out to the plugs and here is the cap the rotor pivots in the center there and rides around and hits these contacts for each cylinder. I don't know how well you guys can tell, but they look pretty darn crusty. So I'm going to clean those up a little bit. Hopefully that was our problem. Still an ant lingering in there. Urgh. Also pull this rotor cap off of here. Let's see what we can't find in there. Yeah, it looks pretty good, except the contactor out here at the end. That's pretty crusty. We'll clean that up too. There should be a set of points down underneath of there which could also be dirty that could be causing our problem but man can't hardly get in there to look at them finally able to get the uh, points cleaned up there i really couldn't show you guys but i reassembled the ignition system let's see if we got spark now Come on, crank over, anytime. Any hey, good, I still don't see spark. Well, I couldn't see spark anywhere with this thing, but I don't necessarily trust it. We're gonna do the old ether test. I'll just squirt some ether in here, and if it pops off, then we know we got spark. That's probably enough.
That's not good. Contact! Come on. <laughs> but that time, let's see if we can get this thing to run on some gasoline, huh? Choke. Contact. Look at this thing go. It is blowing out all kind of critter nest out of the tailpipe up 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 you know what i don't know if i turned the gas on i think i had the fuel bowl full and that was it yeah that'd be the problem there <laughs> the thing actually sounded like it run pretty good dang it guys ready and contact a little throttle flooding out on us. And contact. <laughs> oh man, I should have set you guys up back here. See how much crap blew out of this thing. It's smoky. I, I imagine a lot of that's penetrating oil that was in the cylinders. Alright, take like 12. Contact! Not quite sure what's going on here. It started, it ran, it sounded pretty good, and then uh, it died out that last time, and now it won't restart. It's like we lost spark somehow. Still have power to the coil though, so I don't know what's going on. Contact. Today is a bright new day for the old Ford here. I'm pretty sure that the coil died on us, so I got us a new 12 volt coil. Because I don't even know if that was a 12 volt coil or a 6 volt coil. New resistor in case we need it, and a new condenser. There's no reason to replace the points as they looked fine. Yeah, we'll throw this on here and hopefully it runs. Oh, I see what happened. That's definitely the problem. There's a little spring attachment here. I'll show you in a second. I need to clarify. I think earlier in the video I called this a magneto, and it is not. It is a coil. It's just a really unique looking coil. I've never seen one of these on anything else, so if you guys know what these if you guys know any other applications that these coils go on, let me know, because I've never seen it. Stinking wind here. So it's always nice when you actually find the solid proof of the problem here. Look at that. Can you guys see the difference on that contact spring there? This is what carries the voltage to the points, so this is the only problem. We're just going to go ahead and swap this out and this thing's going to hopefully pop right off again. 
All right, we got the new coil on there. Should be ready to try this thing out. I'm excited. You guys think it's gonna run? There's one way to find out. Contact. Pretty, getting pretty smoky back here. I think there might have been some critter nests in that exhaust that we're gonna burn out here. There's also a pretty good exhaust leak on the back cylinder number four. blowing little bits of shell of nuts and stuff that were stuffed up that exhaust could have some back pressure in there yet getting a whiff of antifreeze I had to put about a gallon in it I just put water though because I didn't know the condition of anything so yeah maybe has a head gasket issue potentially runs pretty decent Exhaust leak. This thing would sound nice. It's really quiet. I wonder if it's worth putting a head gasket and the uh, exhaust gasket on. Cause I can still smell antifreeze. Well, I've had it sitting here running at like half throttle for probably 20 minutes, closing in on a half an hour maybe. I bumped it down to just above idle right now and I'm trying to check and see if I see any bubbles in the radiator. If you see bubbles coming up through right now, that means that there's a head gasket issue for sure because we're getting compression into the coolant system. I really don't think I'm seeing any bubbles. I think all I'm seeing is the, uh, the water returning back to the top of the radiator from the water pump. So, yeah, I don't know why I'm smelling coolant still. 
it's not as bad as it was when I first started it, but I'm still definitely smelling cooling. The de engine's definitely up the temperature, so I don't know, but uh, am I doing something wrong here with these Fords? Every other tractor I've ever run, if I did that, the arms would lift up. Being as that they're not lifting up, I'm going to say that there's probably some sort of issue there. Unless maybe you have to be driving for these to get the power to lift it, I don't know. I kind of doubt it. But we'll try it anyways. I'm not going to get this thing running and not take it for a drive. So let's see if we can make this thing move. Two flat tires are not going to help anything, but it'll still go, I'm sure. stalled it out. Third gear may have been a little bit much for the yard with two flat tires. Let's see if it restarts now. Put it. Hey, purge like a kid. I think this little lever should engage the PTO. We'll push the clutch and throw that in and try and see if the PTO works. So we should see this shaft start spinning right here. Oh, look at the rear lifts works too. Nice. Man, this thing's nice. Almost don't want to get rid of it. So that is fantastic that that rear lift came up. I was kind of worried about that. That's a bit of a bummer. I really didn't know what would be going on in there to cause that to not work. But we don't have to worry about it now. What a little sweetheart. I have the, uh, the intake hose that goes from the carburetor up to the oil bath air cleaner. That needs put on. It could really use an exhaust gasket. I can't tell if it needs a head gasket. So far, there's no compression coming up into the radiator. It's probably been running 45 minutes now. I don't smell antifreeze anymore. So, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. If somebody's looking for a really nice, easy restoration project, man, this is it. Because you could restore this thing in literally two, three days. You could have this thing looking like a showpiece. not a lot to these things it needs a rear rim and a front tire and it's pretty much usable oil pressure gauge even works
projects can you hang on to? I really have no need for it. I wouldn't get to give it the attention it deserves. to ask for much better than that pretty sweet old tractor and I'm glad I saved it from the scrapyard I got a lot of flack from you guys last year whenever we scrapped that 8n or 9n that had the tube frame loader on it and uh, the same guy that got me that deal and scrapped that tractor was gonna scrap this tractor so I was glad I could save it and uh, I just didn't have the means to save the other one at the time but I'm glad I stepped in here and got this one. It's a pretty nice little tractor, and I don't think it'll take much to get this thing to be a good run and operate and everyday user or restore it and make it a showpiece. Every time that I say I'm gonna sell something or even mention maybe getting rid of something, I wind up with an inbox full of questions from people that are interested in possibly buying whatever it is. So this time, it's up to you. I'm gonna put this thing on eBay I'll put a link down in the description. Please don't email me. Everything I know about the tractor is in this video. So if you're actually interested and seriously want this tractor, knowing full well that it's still a project, it does run, the basics are all there, it's a good start to a project. I don't have the time to take on any more projects. As you well know, I have far too many as it is. So I'd rather pass this thing off to somebody that has the time to invest in it. So I'm pretty darn happy with this thing. It shifts through all the gears just fine. The brakes work, the clutches work, uh, the rear lift works, the PTO works. There's good oil pressure. It does still smell like antifreeze just a little bit as I'm sitting here, but I did notice that the radiator is completely plugged full. So a little bit of time with an air compressor or a pressure washer, probably get this thing cooled down immensely and maybe it wouldn't smell like antifreeze. I don't know. Still needs to be some investigating done there, but I don't have the time to dedicate to this thing. If you're serious and you bid on this thing and you win, well, you're gonna get to come out here and pick the thing up because I'm not gonna ship it to you. But you get to meet me, pick up your new tractor, I'll show you everything that I know about it and uh, go over it with you. And I'll even hook you up with a sweet new diesel creek hat. Speaking of sweet new diesel creek hats, we've got all new merchandise in the store over at dieselcreek.com. I got hats, I got a couple different shirts, I got beer koozies, and we got a whole bunch more stuff coming real soon. So if you're interested in helping support the channel and showing off some swag, head over to the channel, dieselcreek.com. Link to that is in the description as well. The last announcement I have for you guys is a pretty exciting one. The May 21st and 22nd, I believe that's a Friday and a Saturday, I'm gonna be up at the National Pike Steam Show as I am every year, and I got special guests coming this time. Chris from Let's Dig 18 and Mike from Dirt Perfect are also going to be up there with me. Uh, there'll be more details to follow, but we're going to do a little bit of a meet and greet up there as well as uh, get around and try and enjoy the show ourselves. So hope to see you up there. That's going to be a lot of fun. But I think that's all I got for this one. If you guys like the video, don't forget, hit the thumbs up button down below. It helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you guys anything. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so I can catch you on the next video. Till the next time guys, thanks for watching, I'll catch you later.